Emmer um, is uh, he be bolus the grease 15-4, Hedaway 15-10, and Lee 12-9 in the year. So again, two teammates who know each other very, <coughs> very, very well. Off to a quick start with uh, Chase Emmer, one point up, and they are moving fast. Chase had to fence another teammate in his previous bout. Was successful. Yeah. And given the speed of Mr. Ahn, whoever wins this is going to have to make sure they do have a way of dealing with that speed, whether it's their own speed or something else. But he is going to be a force to contend with yeah. in that final. I don't think you're going to outspeed Mr. Ahn, but I do believe that you know the, the key is going to be how effective your defense is going to be, depending on whoever gets to that final. So for those of you watching around the world, you are our audience. We have an empty stadium due to the COVID bubble concept and pro protocol for the pandemic, but we're grateful to have these world championships taking place given they were canceled last year in uh, Salt Lake City. Yeah, that was uh, uh, very difficult at the time I was still USA Fencing president and uh, we were really looking forward to hosting the world. Uh, yeah. I live in Seattle. I was looking forward to driving to Salt Lake City. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. everything shut down fast. A little different commute than having to come to Cairo. For yes, sure. for sure. But uh, um, we are very happy to be back with World Fencing. You know, interestingly, this is the, fir this, the last world championship that took place in the FIE was right here in Cairo. In yeah. 2019, it was the Veteran World Championships. Yep. And they did an amazing job of hosting that event as well. Much smaller event than the uh, junior, well, under normal conditions. Well, but still has a lot of events. Oh, no, no, there were uh, 800, 900 competitors, uh, all the same events. But uh, normally, this event would have, you know, pushing, you know, 1,500 fencers as opposed to 900 to 1,000. So this is, uh, it, it's, it, it's large, but it's not nearly as large as it usually would be. Right. The Egyptian Federation has done an amazing job of hosting this event. Uh, it, it has not been easy to really, you know, being in this COVID uh, world is so unnatural, nice, Action, counteraction from Daniel Zhang keeps the score at 3 2. But it's not easy to do so many things that are just unnatural. Uh, we tend to, as humans, want to get close to have a conversation. You have a mask on, so it's hard for anybody to hear, so you want to get close. And, um, you know, being able, not being able to uh, socialize in your normal way, uh, I mean, we, it's just a lot of restrictions. Right. So we're still in the first period, 4-2. Daniel Zhang up against his teammate Chase Emmer in the second semifinal of men's cadet foil. Uh, about a minute left in the first period. So it's been a busy first period already. Um, Chase Emmer's changing his weapon. I think he was concerned that he had a couple of off targets that he wasn't comfortable that uh, should have been off target. Yeah. Well, you know, fencers can be quite persnickety about their weapons, and for good reason. Uh, that's what you, hey, that's your tool. That's your stock and trade. If your weapon's not working, there's not a daggone thing you can do. Right, yeah, although, although very often the problems in electrical equipment when it comes to fencing will be the body cord more than the weapon. I mean, the body cord goes 
Body cords go bad faster than weapons, most armors will tell you. Well, I know that's definitely true in Saber. Oh, it's true in Epe. I, I am not a foilist, but I'm having, I, I'm guessing it's that way too. And we've had some changes in foil equipment and how, um, you know, the, how the uh, wires attach to the blade. So if the, for those of you who don't know about fencing, you, you know, people wonder why those wires are coming out the back of them. So you don't see those wires in senior competition because we use a wireless system now, but the wire is not there to, to hold on to the fence or keep them from going too fast. The wire is there simply as an electrical connection to the scoring system and it's on a recoil system, so way at the far end of the strip, there's a, there's a, a recoil system that pulls that cable back into it. Also the, known as a reel. As a reel, and uh, the uh, cable attaches to the back of the fencer where there's a cable, another cord, a body cord it's called, that snakes un, in through the jacket and down the arm and then attaches to the weapon. And so um, there's a wire and a foil Ooh. that runs down to the tip. And that tip, when the tip hits the lame or the, the person, uh, then a little plunger uh, plunges and a, a circuit breaks and then a score is registered on the system. So, and you have a very thin wire running down that blade that's got a flex and as the blade flexes. So you can imagine, this is a lot of, uh, a lot of electrical, gear that's got to work perfectly if you're going to make that point. So Saber is a lot simpler. You don't have those little tiny wires snaking all the way down the, the blade. Uh, being a Saber armor, uh, I can repair a weapon. But when it comes to foil and epee, it's uh, a well, lot of moving parts. Well, literally, in epee, you've, got, in epee you've got two wires going down the blade. This is going to go into the second period. These young men will move to the end of the strip and think about what just transpired. Try uh, to imagine what their coach would be telling them right now. Um, yeah, if their coaches were available, I would say Daniel would be keep doing what you're doing. Chase has got to figure out how he can, you know, he's, he's making a ton of reposts, but he's not getting any lights. So he's got to figure out how he can get his point on target. Um, it's not that he's, you know, doing things that aren't, uh, I mean, of course there, he's getting hit in his counterattack. That, that's, uh, he's getting hit with defense, but he's also doing a lot of uh, the aggression. I would basically say, hey, have you thought about that there's another end of the strip? Why don't you find out what's going on down there and see if that would change, you know, what's going on in this bout so that you can, Get, get, get some touches, get your confidence up, and get the score closer to being even. And of course, both the Korean and the American will have a coach in the final because they won't be fencing their teammate. Absolutely. And you also notice that uh, b these athletes uh, are coming in, they keep their masks on until they put their mask on. You see Emma Pullins down at the last minute. able to pick it up. So he's been attacking, makes an attack, pair of repost. He can keep getting his pair of repost and keep getting scoring when he's making the pair of repost. He can turn this around fairly quickly. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he, he's within scoring range, you know, so this is, at this point, early into the second period of three, three-point deficit, that's doable. Yes, well, that, and Zhang, came out with an attack. He likes his odds of being down at that end of the strip. He would have been able to get his point on, he would have had another one light touch. 
Yes, some, Just like that. Some fencers do well when they're pushed to the end of the strip. They do well when they're sort of boxed in, and they like fighting their way out of that. Um, not everyone does, but, but you know, there are fencers out there who will draw you in thinking that, oh, I'm pushing them to the back, I'm going to win, and they have a strategy. Oh! Yeah. One of those situations Ooh. where a, a good defense is a good offense. Yeah, they're trying to figure out now, was this Emmer's Perry reprise affair? or Zhang's pair of repos. I think if there's an equal meeting of the blade. Okay, oh, so he says that uh, Zhang parried and then Chase made a counter pair of repos. Took the blade back. Consistently attacking. It's not working well for him. As well, I said, I would have told him, you know, hey, let's see if if you can even get Zhang to attack. Right. I mean, you know, the thing is, it's not to Zhang's advantage to attack right now because what he's doing is is working. So, and Emmer is in a position where he has to push a little bit in order to get a touch. I mean, if he just backs up and waits for Zhang, he's not, Zhang's not going to follow him. He's, he has no incentive. There you go. But that worked that time, and so now he's going to keep doing that. And hopefully he will, you know, on his part, hopefully it will work. That was very nice. Daniel Zhang came in, made a freeze affair. Jay Simmert took the blade back. Nice pair of repos. So now we're starting to see how this chess match is lining up. Zhang wins the pair of repos game again. Down at the end of the strip. Very comfortable down there. He knows his defense is strong. And now with the score where it is, Emmer has got to figure out a way to break through it. And he did. That was a nicely set up attack. He robed the blade three times that, to get it. With what every, what every fencer wants, a single light. Of course, if you foil, if you hit the arm or the leg or the mask, it's off target, doesn't count, but it stops the action. Mm. Like that. Emmer got lucky that time. He was very... That could have been on target. Just, yeah, that yeah, Zane just it could have It was just a little bit low. So there they, they both hit and asked for a review. Let's take a look. See what the slow motion looks like, and that's what the referee is seeing with the video referee. They're collaborating. And when the referee goes to do that, he puts on a, so they just an additional it. face shield. If, you, if you're noticing in the replay, you saw that initially they were running it at 70% of real time. Now they're running it at 80 Right, the referee can control that. And the touch stands. Mr. Zhang wants to make some adjustments to his equipment, maybe. I think he wants to tighten the uh, blade, looking for his. Uh... Of course, when, the, when these fencers in the World Championships, they come out here with these weapons, um, they're, they've all been checked and, and worked by the uh, armorers ahead of time and, and uh, um, the weapons certified. Control. The weapons control, so yeah. after each match, they take it back immediately go to weapons control, which uh, does a complete test on the, on the weapons. The one thing that they're responsible for is that tightness, and unfortunately, it looked like he did not have the right wrench mm -hmm. in his bag to tighten his weapon. <laughs> oh. 
And of course, these fencers' uniforms, those of you who aren't, who aren't familiar with fencing, and at world competition, the fencing uniforms have to, uh, they're made of ballistic nylon and they have to comply with a certain amount of uh, oh, slipped in. puncture resistance, um, measured in newtons, and so do the masks, and everything gets tested to make sure that it's all safe. Fencing is actually one of the safest sports in the world. It's, in Olympic sports, it's technically safer than badminton and golf. Um, and that's primarily because we do use so much protection. If, you want, if somebody's going to be attacking you with a sword, you want to protect yourself. Protective equipment and good protective equipment is playing. Zhang trying to make a counter thrust. Timing was right, off target. Zhang on his way to a victory into the Attack. gold medal round, but nothing is guaranteed until it's over. This is what Chase Emmer wants to do. He wants to be able to take Zhang down there and, and, and be effective in his attacks. Looks like they're going to go to the third period on this one. Ooh, Zhang makes another pair of repos. His defense has just been outstanding. Well, five touch difference going into that third period. I think Mr. Emmert's going to have to go back and rethink his strategy and uh, see if he can change either the tempo, the distance, because um, Zhang has been timing him perfectly, either in being able to pick it up he's, as he tries to come in. He's been able to make counter thrusts, spin out of... Uh, the way, not giving uh, Emmert a lot of good target to attack. Right. Well, and, um, then, and then when Chase slows up, he uh, makes a counterattack. That time, Emmert was able to get his point on, but that's what he needs to do every time. Three minutes left, final period. They're testing. They want to know how many videos. Zhang has two videos, Emmer has one. And each fencer gets two um, video calls throughout the entire bout, but um, if they use one of them and they prevail on it, then they continue going and they don't lose it as a credit. So you could technically have more than two video calls. But if it goes against you, then it's gone. Yep. Yep. And we get to wins that frost. The 9-13. Daniel Zhang in the lead, two points away from a 15-point victory with Chase Emmer hot on his trail. Does it again. 14, taking him within one point of victory. Emmer's frustrated for good reason. Right. He well, he's got to be do. precise. He, does, he, has no, he cannot lose a touch at this point, otherwise he loses the round. Well, he's just unable to hit. He knew exactly where to hit Zhang, right over the back of the There's the single point, putting Daniel Zhang into the gold medal round, guaranteeing him at least a bronze medal. Fencers now, because of the pandemic, not shaking hands after the round, but touching blades. And we have a final coming up on men's, well, first we're gonna have the women's gold medal match, but ultimately we will have the final between Mr. An of Korea and Mr. Zhang of the United States. But for now, stay tuned for the gold medal match of women's cadet foil, where we are going to see Jessica Guo Fencing Anastasia Beznosikova of Russia. So Canada versus Russia. So stay tuned for that. 
Here We're we live are. from the Junior Cadet Fencing World Championships in Cairo, Egypt. I'm Serge Timoshev here with Don Anthony. So stay tuned. <laughs> 